Aimlisted Smart Tech 247 is a provider of AI enhanced cybersecurity services. It's only recently listed uh, here on the AIM market, so it's been finding its feet as a listed company. It's also just released first half results, which come in with an impressive 19.4% rise in revenues and EBITDA up 59.7% year over year. With more on that and more on the company, what it's doing and indeed how it's finding life as a listed company, I'm talking now to Raluca Sashanu, the chief executive of the business. Raluca, welcome. It's a pleasure to be able to catch up with you. We're all talking about uh, artificial intelligence at the moment. I want to get onto that side of it in just a moment. I want to find out more about what it is you're trying to do here as a company um, and uh, the sort of services you're providing and uh, the business um, model that you're, you're working to. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, Smart Tech 247 is a cybersecurity organization that secures some of the world's largest companies. We have a product called uh, Vision X, which is our MDR, Managed Detection and Response Platform. And through Vision X, we provide the next generation security capabilities that include monitoring, uh, threat and vulnerability management, threat intelligence, uh, cybersecurity validation, dynamic risk governance, uh, and so forth. And um, we are a trusted provider. We are renowned for our extensive experience, um, but also our proactive approach and uh, innovation. And if I were to summarize our mission, it would be that we help organizations address three key problems, um, problems that everybody has heard of uh, related to this industry. And these are the evolving threat landscape. As we know, cyber threats are becoming more and more sophisticated, more frequent as well. So it's really difficult for traditional security solutions to keep up. Number two is the massive skills gap that we have in the industry and the fact that security teams are often understaffed and overworked. And lastly, the, the complexity around security operations, the large number of security tools, the fragmented cybersecurity market, um, and the fact that our, our, our organization needs to manage uh, a large number of tools on average. What was your background and how have you come to this point in your career uh, leading up this, this company, which looks exciting. Uh, as I said, you're producing some good numbers. Um, what's your background? I've been with the company for almost 10 years, um, started back in 2014, and um, I started in a marketing role. However, over the years, I've taken on more and more responsibilities, and um, I then took on a director of strategy role and uh, then became the company's uh, chief operating officer. And in the past uh, 16 months, I've uh, served as CEO. Yeah, so you've gone through this period where the markets are now uh, talking about AI almost as an everyday subject. So you've, you've had to ramp up this new sort of level of experience. Presumably you've got a whole team of developers behind you and you're providing what, uh, your own proprietary software which you then presumably sell on? Is it all proprietary or do you uh, use other uh, companies' uh, software to help? The, the majority of our uh, solution um, capability is all proprietary technology. As I mentioned earlier, we have our own platform called Vision X. Yeah. Vision X um, allows organizations to reduce the complexity that is associated with other security tools. So in a typical organization, you would see anywhere from 20 to even 200 security tools. What Vision X does is it sits on top of all of these tools, it reduces the complexity, and it allows us to, to give our customers the, the monitoring, the prevention, and the response capability um, that they need in order to, to stay ahead of the threat. So to a large extent, um, Vision X is key to delivering this capability. However, customers do use other security tools as part of their overall stack um, that and, and together we form a, a comprehensive cybersecurity capability. For yeah, them. And, and who you're engaging with? Are you engaged with corporates, governments, local authorities, individuals? What, what's your, um, what, where's, where, where do the sales go? So uh, at SmartTech247, uh, we secure some of the world's largest organizations and these are across all industries. You're looking at financial, healthcare, pharmaceutical, government, manufacturing, technology, 
automotive and, and so forth. And our uh, clients, our biggest clients are large multinationals, Fortune 500, Fortune 120 companies, even global research organizations that are creating some amazing innovation in the area of medicine, uh, particularly cancer research. And our clients are based all over the world. Um, You're looking at North America, Asia, Europe, uh, and so forth. And to give you an example, our largest customer is a global car technology manufacturer with over uh, 200,000 employees. Do you, do, you, do you release names of, of clients uh, so we can get an idea of the sort of uh, companies we're talking about, or is this a closely guarded secret uh, kept within the confines of the company? Sometimes it has to be a secret. Um, as you know, yeah, cybersecurity as an of industry course. is quite complex. Yeah. But uh, we do have a lot of clients that decide to go public when it comes to, for example, offering a, a reference for us and talking about the, the way we help them. Um, I can give you a few examples yeah. of uh, public tenders that we've won and um, also customers that have provided a reference. For example, the Institute of Cancer Research in the UK is a public tender that we won. Um, we also have uh, customers in the financial sector such as Cluntech, a conglomerate of uh, financial organizations, FPD Insurance, Lea Healthcare, who are part of AIG Group, mm. um, and so forth. Yeah, uh, as you say, uh, some, some big names. Look, um, I, I talked about the, uh, the the first half numbers you, you came through with some pretty hefty increases year over year. You've got seven million euros on the uh, on of cash on the balance sheet. Um, what is your plan from here on in? Do you grow organically or do you grow by acquisition? Uh, I guess it's all part of that question as to what you're going to use the seven million euros for. Well, our, our goal is to increase, obviously, the number of our global clients. Um, we want to grow organically as well by a direct marketing and sales. And uh, we also want to grow the company by engaging with strategic partners across different sectors. Partnerships are quite important to us and we are uh, constantly exploring opportunities to, to expand our ecosystem um, and deliver our integrated solutions. Um, but we also want to grow through M&A. So we are planning to, to use our cash for uh, acquisitions as well. Yeah, um, just wanted to um, talk um, a little bit more about some of the the, the recent uh, contract wins because I know you've you've had one really recently that you wanted to talk about um, and um, explain more about what that brings to the company. I want to talk about the share price in just a minute, but let's talk a little bit more about the recent um, uh, contractual wins. We've recently signed a three-year order for. Um, a significant uh, cybersecurity tool that provides uh, intelligence and uh, prevention capabilities as well for one of our largest customers. Um, over the three years, this deal is worth um, over three million dollars. Okay, well, let's let's look at that. As I said, in the context of the share price and and what you've told us about your plans in the future uh, this is um, of course we don't we don't go back very far of course you've not been long listed on the business uh, but you can see that the initial um, interest in the stock took it up all the way up to 36 pence here we are now at 32 pence what do you say to people that are looking at this interview thinking you they want to get into cybersecurity they want to get into AI um, and and how you are positioning yourself for an opportunity here for investors to get in at this level um, do you see much upside to the, the share price, for example? Yeah, I mean, we've had a good financial year so far. As you mentioned, our share price has been uh, positively stable since we listed. It, it's um, it's grown since December 2022. And um, I think the, the market's reaction to our performance has been quite good. We've had notable contract wins and um, through strong growth plans. We anticipate to have a further increase in our revenue streams and improve financial performance, which will, of course, drive the appreciation of our company's share price. We also plan to invest quite a lot in research and development to create even more innovative products. Uh, the, the cybersecurity threat landscape, as, as I mentioned in the beginning, is expanding um, quite a lot and quite fast, especially now with the artificial intelligence adoption by cyber criminals. So it's important for us as an organization to keep innovating as well. 
Um, and what I would say is that we have um, ambitious plans for our innovation, for our growth, and uh, we plan to release uh, more security products. Uh, and just to confirm, you see yourself as a growth stock, presumably, as opposed to a stock that rewards investors along the, the way with income. I see no evidence of any dividend. Is that correct? Well, we want to grow um, organically. We have a long-term strategy. Uh, this industry is growing quite a lot, um, so the financial projections are really positive. We will also want to acquire more companies. So, uh, as an organization, we have uh, we have ambitious plans to to grow the company, grow our portfolio, and uh, grow our revenues. Yeah, um, you, you mentioned the, 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 the speed at which we're now seeing the growth of cybersecurity, artificial intelligence. And you talk a lot about wanting to acquire. Uh, do you have to fend off uh, approaches to Smart Tech 247 from other companies wanting to buy the business? Because clearly you've got, as you said, a unique product, a product that you can sell. You obviously leaving it out over a number of different organizations quite successfully uh, with this sort of growth. Uh, are, you, um, are, you, are you getting companies come to your door saying we want to buy you? We actually are uh, quite often. However, um, it is not part of our strategy and we are looking to to grow the business ourselves organically. And um, as, as I mentioned, our plans are long-term plans. And, you know, we are, we're an attractive company and we've had really good, strong financial growth over the years. So uh, it, it makes sense for us to, to receive such offers. We have a lot of questions uh, coming through from IG clients about the landscape for uh, international attacks uh, on cybersecurity. What would you say where the biggest threat comes from and what that threat is centered on? Well, I think when you're talking about the biggest threat, it's inevitable not to talk about Russia. And when you look at Russia's power in the cyberspace, you talk about nation state sponsored attacks. Uh, unfortunately, Russia's constant attack on Ukraine has spilled over into the cyberspace. And what we have to remember is that Russia has always been one of the most capable cyber powers in the world. You look at the Conti ransomware group, for example, the one that uh, attacked our health system in Ireland last year. Um, that was a, sim a state sponsored uh, group. Uh, it was a state sponsored attack and they've been very vocal by their, uh, about their intent to cause cyber harm. And um, the, the two things that we have to remember when it comes to sponsored attacks and why they are so dangerous are number one, their motivation is quite high and their resources are quite extensive. So what that means is the tools that are crafted to launch these attacks these attacks that are being sponsored by Russia or North Korea. These are some of the best tools out there. And uh, the common denominator of all sponsored attacks is the fact that they all exploit publicly known vulnerabilities. Most of the times, they're not even uh, zero day vulnerabilities. The problem then is that these tools and these techniques that are used uh, for such attacks end up on the commercial dark web. So that means that everybody can use them. That has a massive impact on the overall cyber criminal system. And right now, the, the situation from a cybersecurity perspective hasn't improved. Um, Putin has accused the US that they're planning to launch cyber attacks on Russia. We don't know if that's going to happen. But if that's true, what this means is that Russia is most likely going to plan attacks on the US critical infrastructure in order to you know, even send the message. But it's not only just the US or the Ukraine that are victims of Russia's cyber attacks. Norway, for example, as Europe's largest gas supplier, is a target. And we've already seen a couple of cyber attacks targeting Norway a few days ago. We've also seen ideologically motivated uh, groups that have begun to target the UK this year, and many more examples. And unfortunately, when this happens, everyone is impacted from the critical infrastructure organizations like healthcare organizations 
to even smaller companies. So just as a follow up on that, to talk a little bit about the solutions to this, um, do nation states go to commercial companies such as Smart Tech 247 to find a solution or do, 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 does a government have to um, ring fence this as a completely almost sort of secretive uh, private um, way of combating nation threats or, or does the commercial world get involved? How, where does the solution come from? We have seen an increase in government agencies across uh, Europe um, reaching out to cybersecurity organizations like us to um, to support them in terms of implementing the best of breed solutions. Um, we also secure a few government agencies in, in Ireland and in the UK from a critical infrastructure perspective. And uh, especially after the attack on the NHS, for example, or uh, the attack on the HSC, we have seen a lot more organizations reaching out to companies like us for support. Now they have their own uh, implementation of cybersecurity tools and uh, capabilities. However, it's impossible to fight these attacks on your own. So uh, most government agencies do decide to outsource to trusted partners, um, especially nowadays when, when such attacks are increasing. Um, just wanted to follow up on, on one, one final question. Um, as I said, you're listed on the, on the London AIM market. Uh, you've got a market cap of just shy of 40 million. Just in simple, straightforward terms, where do you see this going over the next year? What are your ambitions in terms of the size of the business and how you see uh, the, the, the opportunities growing? In terms of the size of the business, we are uh, we are hiring quite a lot at the moment. Uh, just to give you a bit of perspective, since we listed, we grew the, the headcount of the company by 25%. Uh, over the last uh, few years, the, the growth has been a lot more significant. And um, we are hiring uh, across all of our locations. We're looking to acquire companies in uh, Australia, in North America, in Europe as well. So we are looking at a significant uh, expansion and uh, we are seeing a lot of ad ad adoption of our own products. So we will, uh, we will increase our customer base uh, across the globe. Yeah, interesting story. Look, thanks indeed for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to a uh, newly listed company on the AIM market. Uh, that's Raluca uh, Sachano, who is the chief executive uh, of the company called Smart Tech 247. <laughs>